Let's get straight into it today with a bit of a history lesson for today's show before we get to some trade ideas. Unfortunately, looking backwards, there haven't been many soft landings over the past century when it comes to tightening cycles from the Fed, particularly when you've got inflation as hot as it is at the moment. Looking at the charts, when inflation is above 4%, it is usually pretty bad news when it comes to the outlook. Let's get more on that with Pete McGuire from XM joining us live via Skype from Sydney. Peter, it's great to go and see you there on this Friday afternoon. Yes, we are dealing with very, very hot inflation and it's going to be quite a task for the Fed to go and get this under control without doing some pretty serious collateral damage. Absolutely, David. You know, you can put your mind back to 1955. It was a bit before my time, but you're certainly of that vintage. And, uh, <laughs> you, can appreciate, and you can appreciate the the metrics that really have existed over that 65 odd year period and when you've had you know inflation above four percent unemployment under five percent then it's normally you have a recession with a two year over that next two year bandwidth you had a couple of exceptions 65 84 and 94 but traditionally that is what happens and then you're looking at the rates and long term which are uh for quite simply if they're lower than the shorter term then there's a bit that's normally a fairly strong indication and that we experienced that earlier in the year uh, that in inf- that a recession is around the corner all right so from that perspective the historical perspective tells us that uh, there is clear recession risk right now what about the bond market particularly the shape of the uh, the yield curve we know it's been an excellent predictor for recessions in the past what can we go and look to on this occasion well, we've got to keep an eye on that, David, and exactly right. That's the that's the barometer that we use. So we've got to see as far as these rate rises. I'd like to probably look at it in the next two months because we're worrying about as far as Jerome Powell. We've got Lagarde doing some work that they say there's going to be a rate rise there in Europe in, in July. We've got another rate rise tip for July from Jerome Powell and his team. So it's something that we're going to look at over the next over the uh, the Northern Hemisphere summer and really get a good appreciation by August of yield curves, what's happening to the short end, and what's happening as far as uh, the the inflation story and have they been able to rein it in at all? And you've got oil prices at 123. I, I just saw a note that some of the analysts are saying a 140, 150 handle over this summer. So that's not a good sign, David, and that's really going to be, um, I think, a, a major issue for any central banker to try and manage. The fact that we saw that twos tens curve ever so briefly go negative uh, earlier this year got a lot of attention. Everyone was talking about recession risk, but Pete, it was legitimately for about 30 seconds, if that. Does that matter or do you still think it's a pretty strong signal that no, it did happen and in the past what it's led to? Well, Dave, I mean, yeah, exactly 30 seconds and and it's a hard one to to appreciate and maybe maybe that's all it's got to hit. But I... I think we've seen enough movement over the last two years and where we're starting from and where we are at the current this, this current frame that there's so many moving parts that have, need to be appreciated. And uh, this this summer period in the Northern Hemisphere, I think, is one of much intrigue. So, yeah, I'm just sitting on my hands. I just want to see what the Fed prepared to do, what they actually do, and the other central, the major central banks across the world, how aggressive they are. And then we get a better appreciation because... I don't think naturally from a recessionary fear, it's more to a stagflation and how long that's going to be to work through. It's really interesting to watch what's going on, particularly in the long end of the bond curve at the moment in the States as well as other parts of the world. That US 10 year note yield is really starting to go and jackknife higher again. That's corresponding yeah. with what you, you mentioned there, some of that strength in energy prices at the moment. I tell you another impact is having is on the Japanese yen. There is a fantastic oh. chart you've got and given us here in your daily note. Let's have a look at it and just see the damage the yen is suffering right now because it, for one part, it's a major energy importer. Absolutely, David. So yeah, that, that uh, chart tells the story and uh, it's just been dramatic move up. And there we were, we put our mind back two years and you're sitting there at around about nearly, you know, 100 yen for 100 cents. It wasn't far off it. And that big move to the upside, we're in out around about a 133, 134 handle. And it's just been a massive sell off. So, yeah, Mrs. Watanabe, they're the, the, that's what they call the uh, Japanese um, female traders, uh, that, you know, the housewives that trade. They're, they're enjoying it immensely. And the appetite across the world has just been one way traffic. It's just been off to the races since Christmas, as demonstrated in the chart. 
from around about that 113, 112 number all the way through to 132. So 133, yeah. No one's made more money than the Japan, anyone that's um, been on the right side of this trade for the Japanese yen. The, look, it's already gone and broken above those previous highs we saw a few months back, Pete. So where does it get to? Because I've had to go back on the, the, the monthly charts, not the daily or the weekly, the monthly charts to go yeah. and find some periods as to when it was back at these levels. Well, David, I can remember distinctly 1985 and I was working on a desk and it was 242 yen to the dollar and that was the Paris Accord that they, um, uh, that there was a G5 or a G7 meeting and then the yen naturally uh, appreciated greatly. So I'm not suggesting it's going to get the 242, but I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a 140 handle. Too hard to really uh, forecast too much further out than that. But this is where that... I, I just don't see the Japanese doing anything dramatic as far as rating, raising rates and the world's in a raising rate mentality. So that in turn is causing much havoc for Bank of Japan. And uh, now's the time to travel to Japan as a tourist, David. Great country to visit. It is indeed. Uh, I'm already eyeing off potentially maybe a ski trip at some point in the near future if we uh, keep seeing the levels at the moment. Uh, some great snow in that part of the world. I want to go and ask you, yep. Pete, I'm not sure if you saw during the course of the week as well as the headlines that not one single JGB 10-year duration bond traded over the course of an entire session. Is Does that mean that for international investors to express anything when it comes to the outlook for, for Japanese uh, no, currency in Japan in whole, they can only use the currency, not the bond market? Well, Dave, I mean, we don't um, primarily look at that bond market too heavily as far as the Japanese, but that was it very, very... I did see it. It came across my radar and I was a little bit like, wow. So that just showed you, um, you know, the appetite out there and uh, no takers really demonstrate um, that there's no takers. So yeah. they looked at other markets and looked at other opportunities and... Uh, you know, the, the Japanese have done fairly well when you're looking at the Nikkei and what we've experienced in the last, say, you know, five to six months. It's been one-way traffic there as well. So it's uh, there, there are some parts of the market, the yen's come off, but the Japanese stock market has performed extremely well over that period. And uh, we're nothing like, you know, back at 1989 levels of 39,000, but we're still at around about that 26, 27,000. And that's not a bad number to, to uh, I think, respect and appreciate. We've got about a 20, nearly a 28,000. I'm noticing Japan's off, Nikkei's off about 1.4% today, Dave. Speaking about 1989 Japan, it's got a shutter down my spine. It's a few, a few instances happened back then, of course, and uh, no, uh, grappling with it ever since. Pete, uh, let's go and change tack and go and speak about what happened overnight. ECB. Uh, yeah, it's got a yeah. really tricky task in its hand because we talk about inflationary pressures. They're seeing the same inflationary pressures in terms of magnitude across many parts of the euro area. But uh, demand yeah. isn't as strong and they've got negative deposit rates. Uh, where do they go from here? I, that's exactly right, David. And we're, we're a, big, um, a big corporation across Europe because that's where the majority of our headcount is. And they heard on Main Street, and I talked to my fellow workers over there, and, you know, the cost of goods, what they're experiencing across Europe is just dramatic from coffee up, you know, a euro for a cup of coffee in the last six months. Um, the milk prices, utility bills, you name it, fuel and so on. So, yeah, it's a pretty tough, hard market in, in Europe at the moment. And uh, I, I'm i just sitting here again, seeing what Lagarde's prepared to do. You take on board negative rates with Switzerland. What's going to happen as far as Swiss franc? Are we going to see a big... Um, well, dramatic move with gold. I'm, yeah, it's a, it's a very fascinating time at the moment. And uh, it's one that traders are holding the world with both hands and looking for opportunities. And uh, this could be a very dramatic next two months. Pete, what are we going to see with the euro dollar? Because that looks really interesting at the moment. Uh, all of a sudden, you've got the ECB joining the Fed as being quite uh, no, hawkish in the rhetoric coming through. Uh, we know that it's been in a downtrend for a long period of time. What are some of the entry and exit points you're looking for for any trades looking ahead? Well, we're at 106.34, David, and I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe you're going to see possibly a 105 again, but then I think it's going to whipsaw. And maybe, you, you know, if Lagarde gets her way, you could be back at 110 over a period of a month or so. So it's going to be, a, again, another market to really keep an eye on. We've had a massive sell-off as far as euro, and then we moved to yen. So, yeah, it, it, all the currency traders have just... Um, embracing these big moves and they've just been dramatic and that's a, another point that maybe you're going back to a 110 if Lagarde and maybe she's got to be more aggressive to try and rein in inflation. We could get a couple of rate rises by the end of summer. 
it's very, very uh, noticeable on that chart there, that triangle pattern. Uh, it's really starting to coil up there. Which direction do you think it's likely to break at this point? Well, I wouldn't be surprised at 106, David. Maybe you're hitting a 105 in the short term, and then I think you're going to see big whipsawing and volatility swing. So that's just the... It's very hard to forecast because you can be out, you can be out by, you know, all of a sudden it's at 104, 103. But I think at the moment, I wouldn't be surprised, and I've got to be careful from this from a general advice perspective, um, but I, I wouldn't be surprised to see, yeah, some volatility re-enter the market as far as, yeah, uh, as, far as euro dollar. Yeah, just a little pesky uh, US CPI report out tonight as well to go and spice things up. Uh, Pete, to go and yep. finish off, I uh, just want to go and get uh, you know, your take about what you're doing with your trading at this point in time. Uh, holding periods, you no know, position sizing relative to what you'd normally do. What, what are you doing at this point? David, you've got to be conscious as far as what, what market you're trading. If we're trading currencies, they're liquid, they're incredibly deep. So there's, there's plenty of um, opportunity to get in and out of a market and... Uh, you, you're not surprised with the volatility over that 24-hour window. You know, you're just big moves. If you're trading oil, then everyone seems to be long over the last couple of days and maybe there's a bit of, there could be a little bit of exhaustion. You could see, a, a, a you know, maybe a dollar or two taken out of it quickly. Um, equity markets, you've just got to look at your charts. Have a look what happened with the US equities overnight. They got spanked down and possibly you're going to see further softness across this June period. So yeah, it depends. One is the instrument, secondly is the direction, and thirdly is how much appetite you've got as far as risk. And uh, that's one thing that traders, everyone's got a different perspective, age perspective and you know risk management styles. But yeah. I, um, it's been a very, very good year to date. And I wouldn't be surprised to see that continue for the next six and a half months up until uh, December. Yeah, traders' markets at the moment, so we'll see what happens ahead, but certainly lots of uncertainty, which generally goes and leads to volatility. Uh, Pete McGuire ah. from XM, fantastic to chat. You enjoy your long weekend, and we'll speak soon. Thanks. Take care, David. Thank you. Bye.